In this video, I'm going to walk you guys through why I believe that defined risk options trading strategies are more riskier than they seem. And full disclosure, I do not trade defined risk strategies. I only trade undefined risk. And it's for the reasons I'm about to show you in this video. So if you get any value from this, all I ask for is that you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe because what I do is provide option education videos to make you a better options trader. So the summary of this video is the reason why defined risk trades are more riskier is because they don't provide you the flexibility when things go wrong. Now, if we take a classic example, I'm on a Tesla options chain, six days to go to this expiration. For those who are new, a classic put spread would be, is that you sell the 235, you buy the wing. So buying this wing caps your, caps your risk uh, with the width of the spread minus the uh, premium received. So this is a $5 spread and you have 75% chance of winning or being profitable at the date of expiration. Your max profit is obviously the credit you receive, $116. Your max loss is the difference in the spread. So five minus $1.16. Uh, $1. Your max loss is $3.84. So the reason why people like defined risk is because I know the maximum I can lose in this trade is $384. Whereas if you remove the wing, right, your probability is basically the same. Your credit is a lot higher because you're not paying the $1.88 or $1.94 to cap off your wing. So your max profit is there. But when people see this, they see two things. One, the max loss of $23,000 and the buying power of $11,000 to place this position in a margin account. And if you were in a cash account, it's $23,500. Now, if you learn how to trade undefined risk properly, you're never going to take a $23,000. Uh, loss. It just ain't going to happen if you know what you're doing. And I want to explain to you right now where how this maximum loss of 23,000 compared to a max loss of 384 is actually less riskier. So stick with me and let's get right into this particular example. So obviously what we need to do is we need to simulate a put spread being in the money. So Tesla's trading at 244.88. So let's just say, just get rid of these, right? So let's just say we have a put spread. Let's say we have the two, the 250 and the 245. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll, we're going to roll this position. So therefore we're going to be buying back the option that we sold the 250 and we're going to be selling the wing that we bought 245. So when we put this position on, Tesla was trading at 260, for example, we're now in the money on this position. And you can see here that to buy back this option, it's going to cost us $2.70. So what we're going to do, we're going to simulate rolling this position out to the week after. So we've got the October 16th. So we've got the ones here that we have here. We've got a 270 debit. So let's just say that we sell the exact same strikes, right? The 250, 245. You can see here, we'll do that for a $5 debit. And we obviously would have picked up some premium when we first placed the uh, trade. Overall, the position is still inside the net credit. However, we need a bit of luck to happen here. We need Tesla to go back up. What if Tesla continues to go back down? So what I'm saying is whenever we look to roll a position, we try to put our strikes in a bit more of a favorable position while trying to maintain an overall net credit. So it, to do that in this example, if we were to you know, roll the position to the 240, 245, 240, which again puts us inside, the, inside our spread, it's still going to cost us money of $43 to make that roll. And if you picked up $2, $3 or whatever it was on the initial roll, you're still up on the overall trade, but you're giving back some of the profits that you got into the trade initially. So when I say that this is more risk is you are taking a debit, you are technically losing money placing this actual position here, even though your overall trade is up. And again, we looked at the um, probabilities around 70% of the time. So 70% of the time you'd be okay. 30% of the time you might get into this scenario over here, which then causes you problems. And if you can't, if Tesla keeps going down, 
and we can't recoup this. Therefore, we're going to lose the overall amount of the spread that we had initially. And yes, this is just adding to the loss effectively. So in theory, you're taking more risk by, by placing this position here. So hopefully that kind of makes sense that because you are buying the wing, you're capping the amount of premium you can collect. And therefore you are struggling to push your, in this case, push down your strikes to a more favorable position. Now. Let's do this again, but let's look at this with an undefined risk trading strategy. So let's just say we sold a put at the, at the 250. So again, the short, what we did before is we had the 250, we sold the 250 and we bought the 245 as protection. So now let's say that we're going to buy back that 250. Again, you're paying a debit of $9.55. But we're going to roll this position. It's going to net net yourself out when we do this. So we're doing the same thing as what we did before, but we're not obviously buying back a wing because we didn't set buy, a, uh, buy a wing in the first place. So we buy back the 250. And if we go through the same examples as we did last time, let's say then we sell uh, the 250 again. We're going to do, whereas before we did that for a $5 debit, we are now doing this for a $3, $3.70 credit. Now, this isn't the most favorable position to be in because again, you do need a bit of luck here for Tesla to go back up. What this does do though, is that it adds an extra $3.70 to your overall break even. So let's just say you sold the 250 and you picked up, I don't know, $4 of credit, right? So therefore your break even would be uh, 246. Let's say you pick up another $4 and now you are, <clears throat> so now you're at two, uh, 242. So your break even is pretty much just still on, still under the money. So having an undefined risk strategy allows you even, even at the same strike to pick up more credits and widen out your break even point. But let's just say, for example, like we did with the last time we, when we place a roll, we want to put it into a more favorable position. So if I go out to the 245, which again, pretty much puts us at the money for another 13 days, we have reduced our risk by $500. And we also got paid $1.05 for actually improving our position. Now think about that for a second. Whereas in the other example, yes, your max loss is only $300 or whatever it was. And here you still got 24,005 of quote unquote maximum loss. Tesla ain't going to zero, right? And if Tesla goes to 220, for example, next week, then you could be in a bit of trouble there. But there are other things you can do on that by setting a call against it, using the call premium to push your put down. There's again, that's the kind of advanced stuff of trading undefined risk. But what I want to do in this simplistic example is to show you how undefined risk is actually less riskier than a defined risk trading strategy where I've just shown you've added more risk onto the trade. Yes, your overall maximum loss is smaller, but the chance of you realizing that maximum loss is a lot higher than realizing the maximum loss on an undefined position. So again, if you want to learn more, you can go to my one-to-one -one coaching. It is the join button and the pin comment down below. So we can get on a call and go through this one-to-one -one and where we can go through it, real life examples of how I trade undefined options strategies.